Hey, shalom, shalom, mishpocha. Welcome to another edition of Ray Bash's Ramblings, where I'd like to tackle the subject about the sinner's prayer. Um, uh, somebody asked me, is it necessary to say the sinner's prayer um, to, you know, to believe in the Messiah? Uh, is it necessary to lead somebody else, whether they be Jew or Gentile, in the sinner's prayer uh, to be able to accept Messiah? Uh, no. The sinner's prayer is a good guideline and it is a good concise formula that takes principles from the scriptures and you know puts them in a nice package where somebody could could recite and it's meant that this prayer in the recitation of this prayer that you know mentally you know they're thinking yes I'm believing what I'm saying I mean what I say and in their heart yes I believe this um, but it has kind of been taken as a uh, I don't know, a magic words or magic formula, and the sinner's prayer itself has been raised almost to the stat status of Scripture, as if, you know, you could actually find the sinner's prayer located in Scripture, where it says, you know, ask Jesus to come into your heart to be your personal Lord and Savior. Uh, the whole come into your heart thing is, is just cultural, uh, you know, because we in the Western world, and, and even in parts of the Eastern world, uh, you know, we believe that the heart is the seat of our emotion. You know, it's 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 our core. It's 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 our being. It's who we are. And when we ask Jesus to come into our heart, uh, you know, it means that we're accepting the Messiah. You know, uh, into the very core of our being. We're believing it to, to the to the very core of our being. So in some countries, uh, you know, the missionaries will tell you that they accept the Messiah into their liver, or they accept the Messiah into their bowels, or they accept the Messiah even into their throat. Um, so, you know, if, if a Jewish person uh, wants to believe that Yeshua is Messiah, you don't have to lead him in the sinner's prayer. That's, that's foreign to him. Um, but as you're going through the Tanakh, going through the prophecies, going through the scriptures, and you say, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I believe this, you know, or yeah, I, I, you know, um, all he has to do, you know, is, you know, just say, hey, man, do you really believe this? Do you acknowledge this? You know, do you accept this? Do you, do you accept this now as, as your belief? Yeah, I mean, I do, you know. Um, that's good enough. Um, a lot of times, you know, the sinner's prayer does help because, you know, it, it, it's kind of like closure to people. You know, um, you know, the sinner's prayer does, you know, people do feel a change after they pray it. So if somebody wants to pray it, that's fine. But it's not necessary, and to, a, to most Jewish people it would be a foreign concept. Um, you know, as far as a Gentile, um, I've been asked, are they, you know, if they want to follow the Torah, uh, are they obligated to convert to Judaism? No, by no means. Um, the conversion to Judaism just means that you're going into the covenant of Abraham, and uh, you know that you're becoming a Jew, and uh, therefore you're entitled to the promises of Abraham. You know the promised land. Uh, you know there's certain aspects. Please don't get me wrong, but but this is a very poor analogy. But the best I can come up with off off the top of my head. Think of it almost as, as a Kroger, you know, a grocery store plus card. That if you have this grocery store card, you get special discounts, you get special perks. Well, you know, with the circumcision, you're allowed to eat the Passover lamb. Uncircumcised aren't allowed to eat the Passover lamb. So there's some things that, um, you know, a person who converts, who is circumcised, can do, uh, as opposed to somebody who believes that Yeshua is Messiah and walks in his footsteps by following Torah but doesn't officially convert. There's some things that he can't do. Uh, that's that's it. It's almost like being a part of a country, uh, being a permanent resident, you know, or being a part of a country where you're considered part of the country. It's just that you can't vote. It's almost kind of like that concept. But somebody who decides not to convert should not be treated as a second-class citizen or, or that somebody who did convert like they're better than them. No, because, um, you know, or if it's a, a Gentile who converts to Judaism, uh, their conversion, their Gentile past is to be mentioned and remembered no more. You shouldn't treat them differently than somebody who's born ethnically a Jew and was circumcised the eighth day. Kepha, Peter, uh, was guilty of doing this, and Rav Shaul, the Apostle Paul, called him out on the carpet for this. So a person who does not convert um, is considered, according to the Scripture, a God-fearer, um, you know, and uh, they, you know, if they can convert if they want to. But that convert conversion, that decision to convert, should be from pure motives, uh, not that, oh, I want to get brownie points with God, or, oh, this is going to make me more saved, or, oh, this is my ticket to Israel. No, you know, somebody who just, with all their heart and soul, just wants to convert because they just want to be Jewish so bad, not because they have any ulterior motives. Um, you know, so you have to be very careful on, on your the people's reasonings, why they want to convert. Uh, because of the ulterior motives, that's why in modern Judaism, 
a convert is turned away three times, you know, um, to con uh, converting, you know, to converting. So uh, to make sure that their motives are pure, if they come back a third time, hey, they're really, you know, they're really wanting this, you know, they're, they're not being turned away by our rejections. So that's kind of why things are that way in modern Judaism today. So uh, I hope this answers some questions, clears up any misconceptions, and clarifies things for people who uh, wanted to ask but were afraid to or didn't know how to ask or just never even thought to ask. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, Torah, um, this uh, Ray Bash's ramblings, and tune in, uh, tune in again next time when who knows what else I'll be talking about or discussing. So I look forward to uh, all your messages, questions, comments. Thank you for all your prayers. Uh, your support, your encouragement, your donations, and uh, your love and your friendship and your brotherhood. Shalom and Shavuot Tov. Catch you later. Bye.